Hello and welcome. My name is Andrea Barrett. I am a solution consultant here at Microsoft and Nuance. I'm also a physician assistant and I have been for about 25 years at this point in time. I'm always really excited to talk about DAX Copilot with customers and I'm thrilled that we're able to go through a demonstration so that you can see this amazing technology in action. So let's go ahead and just start with reviewing the mobile application. Now you can see that DAX Copilot is located in the same application as Power Mac, Power Mic Mobile. Now for those of you who aren't familiar with Power Mic Mobile, this is essentially Dragon and it turns my cell phone into a secure wireless microphone. The clinician is very easily able to toggle back and forth between the two. And when we go over some of the workflow capabilities of this technology, you'll see why that's so important. Now, also on the mobile app is you can see a list of summaries. So these are all of the encounters that I've completed today. A scheduling feed is not required to use DAX Copilot. And so we would simply recommend that the clinician use two patient identifiers, such as name, age, date of birth, or gender, to be, to be able to identify the recording. Now, to begin the recording, I can go ahead and, and press the plus button down in the lower side of the mobile application. This takes me to the screen and just makes me aware as a clinician that I need to be sure that I've gotten appropriate consent from the patient in order to use this technology. Now, for the purposes of today's demonstration, my colleague, Caitlin, is going to be the patient. We're going to go through a mock clinical encounter, and she's going to be playing Maria Gonzalez, who's 35 years old, coming in for a cough. So, hi, Maria. How are you? I'm doing okay. How are you? I'm good. Are you ready for me to go ahead and begin the recording? Yes. Okay. Let's begin. Maria Gonzalez is a 35-year-old female who's here today with complaints of cough. So, Maria, why don't you tell me a little bit about what's going on with your cough? So, about two weeks ago, I noticed a little tickle in my throat, and then it's gotten progressively worse into, like, a deep, rough cough where I've even been coughing up some, like, green mucus. Okay. Um, has there been any blood when you cough? No, no blood. Okay. And you said this started about two weeks ago. Yes. What other symptoms have you had? Have you had any fever or chills? No, I've just had a little bit of a headache, honestly. Okay. Do you feel like you're drinking enough fluids? I think so. Okay. I, it's just nothing is quenching my thirst and keeping my throat yeah. nice and... Yeah, it's just making you want to cough more. Yeah. Yeah. And any pain in your face at all? Any nasal congestion, sore throat, anything like that? Just the sore throat. Um, I haven't noticed any nasal congestion. Okay. And then um, can you think of anything that might have caused this? Is anyone else sick? So I went on my friend's bachelorette trip two weeks ago and one of the girls came sick. Okay. All right. So where did you go? We went to Nashville. Oh, nice. I yeah. love Nashville. It's a great city. Yeah, you have to try one of those pedal bars the next time you're there because that was so much fun. Yeah, I've seen them. I haven't been on one. I usually <laughs> just go for the barbecue and the music, which is great. Yeah. So. Um, now, any other medical problems that I should be aware of? Um, I had a blood clot in my um, left leg about two years ago, so I'm on blood thinners. Okay. Now, since you traveled, do you have any shortness of breath at all? No. No. Okay. And have you noticed any leg swelling or anything? Nope. I wear my compression socks daily, so no swelling there. Okay. And you're following up with your hematologist? Yep. Okay. All right. Um, now, I want to go ahead and just do a quick physical exam. Okay. I don't want you to worry. I'm going to be calling out some of these exam findings, but I'm going to let you know what that means when I'm done, okay? Okay. All right. I'm going to go ahead and just start by pressing on your face here. Any, any pain when I press on your face? Just on my forehead a little bit. Okay, all right. On facial examination, there's mild pain to palpation of the frontal sinuses bilaterally. Just gonna look in your throat. Okay, on throat exam, the uvula is midline. Uh, no evidence of any peritonsillar exudate. On neck examination, there's no cervical adenopathy present. I'm just gonna go ahead and take a listen to your heart and lungs, okay? Okay. On cardiac examination, the heart is in a regular rate and rhythm. I don't appreciate any murmur, rub, or gallop. And on pulmonary examination, uh, there's chorus ronchi bilaterally and occasional expiratory wheezing. So, Maria, what does all of that mean? That just means that you do have a little bit of wheezing in your lungs, 
and they sound a little congested. Um, so I just think you have pretty significant inflammation there. Uh, so let's just talk about my plan, okay? Okay. So for your cough, I do believe that you most likely just have a viral syndrome, like a viral um, bronchitis. I, don't, I wanna hold off on antibiotics right now, um, but we can go ahead and order a chest X-ray just to make sure that we're not missing any pneumonia. If your chest X-ray comes back positive, we'll go ahead and prescribe you some antibiotics. But in the meantime, this is really just gonna be treated with supportive measures. Uh, I wanna go ahead and prescribe an albuterol inhaler. It's one puff, one to two puffs um, every four to six hours as needed for any type of shortness of breath or excessive coughing you have. And then I also wanna give you something to help, you know, make it easier to cough up that phlegm. So we'll go ahead and prescribe some glyphenicin, 600 milligrams twice a day to help with any of that mucus, okay? Um, any questions about any of that? Can I take all that medication with my blood thinner? Yes. Okay. Yes, you can, yeah. Um, have you uh, gotten a flu shot? Yet? No, I haven't. Okay, all right. So I think, you know, we're already seeing cases of the flu, so I think that we should go ahead. So from a preventative medicine standpoint, I want to go ahead and schedule your flu shot. Um, I'll see if you can get it done today. Otherwise, we can schedule it for a different time. Um, and then um, for your third problem of your history of your pulmonary embolism, you know to follow up with your hematologist, have your INR checked regularly. I, I, I'm assuming you do all of that. For yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right. Any questions about any of that? No, it all sounds good. Okay, great. Well, the nurse will come in and we'll get you checked out, okay? Okay. All right. Good to see you. Nice to see you too. Bye-bye. Bye. So in a moment, we'll be able to see what the AI was able to generate from that conversation. We'll be able to see this information directly within the mobile application. Now the clinician can go ahead and start editing this information directly within the mobile app should they choose to do so. Uh, so we can see that it's already back. Let's go ahead now, let's say I'm back at my desktop and I wanna go ahead and start putting this information into the EHR. I'm gonna go ahead and open up my desktop version of the application and I can see that Maria's summary is right here. Let's just take a moment to go ahead and review what the AI was able to generate from our conversation. So it talks about how she had a tickle in her throat, it's gotten worse, coughing up green mucus, no blood with cough, she has a little bit of a headache, she thinks she's drinking enough fluid, no facial pain, she went to a friend's. Now it says here bottled trip, now I can easily change that to bachelorette two weeks ago. Um, I can easily do that using Dragon Medical One. And it also talks about her pulmonary embolism that she had and she sees her hematologist. Now the way that you see this output delivered to the clinician, it will be delivered in standard fashion in this standard format based on specialty. And so on the physical examination, you don't have to say the physical exam in front of the patient if you don't want to. You can always step outside of the room press the record button and just speak your physical exam findings. So that's one option. Alternatively, you can continue to use any macros that you've created within your EHR to augment this output. And then DAX Copilot is able to go ahead and get the diagnosis as well as the medical decision making for each issue talked about during the encounter. So we talked about her cough. We're gonna go ahead and give some glyphenicin, albuterol, schedule her for a flu vaccine, and she's gonna follow up with her hematologist for her pulmonary embolism. So I think that that's a very succinct and complete note. It really didn't need a lot of editing except for uh, the bachelorette party. If I wanted to add anything to that, I can certainly do that using Dragon Medical One. So let's go ahead and look at some of the workflow capabilities of getting this information into the EHR. So you can see on here, my Dragon Medical One toolbar, this is newly redesigned, takes up less footprint on my screen. I'm gonna to go to Maria here. And now there are a couple different ways that a clinician can get this information into the EHR. Again, this technology is not one size fits all. Each clinician might use this technology a little bit differently and that's why it's going to be so scalable throughout healthcare organizations. So the first way that you can go ahead and move this information in is by simply using your voice to move all of the information into a blank template. So I can very easily just go to my PowerMic Mobile, transfer all. 
So you can see how easy that was for me to move all of that information over with just my voice. Now this might be an attractive workflow for a clinician because they've already seen the information in the mobile app. They've already seen it within the Dragon Medical One window. And again, both of those, uh, both of those areas you're allowed to edit. And so they can just move this into the EHR and sign it. Now, another alternative to move this information over is by using templates because clinicians use a lot of templates and macros within their EHR to make their documentation more efficient. They also use Dragon Medical One and you would be able to use any auto text that you've created within Dragon Medical One to, again, to augment this information. So for example, I'm going to put in, I'm going to use an auto text to put in a template uh, for, uh, for my documentation. My soap note, transfer HPI. So again, I was able to move that over with the use of my voice. Now I'm gonna go ahead and use those auto texts from Dragon Medical One. Again, these are essentially groups or phrases of words that I would use commonly throughout my documentation that I've really just given a voice command. So I can simply say, add my ROS. Transfer PE. Transfer assessment and plan. And so at this point in time, I've gone ahead, I've used auto text. I can again edit using Dragon Medical One. And now I wanna go ahead and use what we call a step-by-step -step command, which brings, which is through Dragon Medical One, which brings in functionality. So be able to sign a note, open up an email or Word document. So for example, I can simply say, Sign my note. And that's essentially, uh, that's essentially it. So you can see the power and the potential for this technology to really make a clinician's workflow very efficient. Um, so that's about all we have today for the demonstration. I hope you, I hope you enjoyed it. Have a good day.